Type in Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri in Google, and nearly every essay and video on him will be focused on his alleged note that he wrote with instructions to open a year after his passing, containing a supposed proclamation of Yeshua as the Mashiach. Now, those of you that are familiar with the content of this channel and my work will likely presume that this video will be no different. While I will discuss this subject, there is something worth considering about his message that I don't think people have thought about, which I will reveal in the course of this video. But this note, whichever side of the fence you stand, fades into obscurity against the essence of this man's greatness. Mashiach's arrival is an inevitable fact, one way or the other, but the emphasis of his coming should be prepared for with each individual's standing before Hashem. Teshuva and working on obedience to Torah, Diligent study, practicing charity and increasing in good deeds is the best way to prepare for his arrival. In short, to do what he actually taught his followers to do is key. You can be an expert in Messiah, knowing all about him and yet give little thought to routing out your own personal flaws. Every person's encounter with Messiah will come at the end of their life, let alone at the eventual time of his arrival on earth, if one lives to see it. This is probably one of the most important videos you will ever watch. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. It's time to see what type of man can actually merit favor from Hashem. It's time to become acquainted with what it really takes. Join me as we look at the life of Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri was born in 1898. Well, actually, we're not sure, but this is his traditional date of birth. He lived over 100 years, passing away in January 28, 2006. It is estimated that somewhere between 200,000 to 500,000 people took part in his funeral procession. One source has it at 80,000 attending. I'm not sure why these figures vary, but as you can see by these images, he was well loved by countless people. The funeral procession started from Nakalat Yitzhak Yeshiva, a house of study opened by his son years earlier, located in the Bukharian quarter of Yerushalayim, next to the Rav's home. The procession wound its way through the streets of the Holy Land to Givat Sha'ul Cemetery, near the entrance to the city itself. Rav Kaduri was a renowned Mizraki Haradi rabbi and Kabbalist who devoted his life to Torah study and prayer on behalf of the Jewish nation. His father, Rabbi Ze'ev Diba, a spice trader, sent him to study at Zilka Yeshiva, the Academy of Jewish Learning of Baghdad. As a youth, he studied under the great Benish Kai, Rabbi Yosef Kaim of Baghdad, who lived from 1840 to 1913. He was regarded as an Ilu, a prodigy, by the sages of the venerable Baghdad Jewish community. In 1922, Rav Kaduri immigrated to the Holy Land and joined the ranks of the Yerushalayim Kabbalists, even as he earned his living for many years refusing to live on charity by working as a scribe and bookbinder, committing the books that he worked on to his memory. It is said that he memorized the entire Talmud, which is over 5,400 pages of dense text, together with its commentaries, along with a multitude of other works. He wrote several mystical texts in his own life, which he never published, as Rav Kaduri did not want them getting into the wrong hands. He went on to become the head Mekubal Kabbalist among Israel's rabbis. He was famous for eating very little and speaking very little. Despite his occupation with study, his doors were always open to help others. In fact, he refused to lock the doors of his home, even amidst a spate of thefts. Rav Kaduri excelled in modesty, simplicity, love of people, and was always ready to reach out and bless any person whether secular or religious, laborer or businessman, child or elderly. He would receive everybody equally with warmth and love. Thousands would come to him for his blessings, including cabinet ministers, executive officers, and other personalities. Many are witnesses of how Rav Kaduri's blessings materialized. 
To help those who needed to succeed or as encouragement and support for those who were suffering physically or mentally, Rav Kaduri would create amulets in which he would incorporate blessings based on a tradition described in the Talmud and Kabbalah. He always emphasized, however, that the study of Kabbalah was only for those who were learnt in Jewish Halakha, Musa, and had at least 40 years of mentored Torah observance behind them. The Orthodox Israeli novelist Chaim Be'er once said of Kaduri that his appearance was striking. He radiated a great deal of human warmth. Whenever he passed by, people would whisper, there goes a truly righteous man. One of his students, Rabbi Benyahu Shmuley, described him as an extremely pleasant man, extremely happy, and he did not know what anger was even once. In 1990, Rav Kaduri visited the Labavitcher Rebbe, and the encounter is available in its entirety over at the Chabad.org website, and it depicts an enthusiastic Rav Kaduri sharing with the Rebbe news of the near completion of a new Kabbalah yeshiva in Eretz Israel. According to Baruch Gordon in a 2005 article on the 7 Israeli National News website entitled, Kabbalist urges Jews to Israel ahead of upcoming disasters. On the date of that very visit, the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave a blessing to Rav Kaduri that he would not pass from this world until he met and learnt the name of Messiah. This encounter did allegedly come to pass in a mystical vision on the 9th of Keshvan 5764, which was the 4th of November 2003, when Kaduri spoke with the Messiah. On his deathbed, Rav Kaduri revealed this information to his closest students with the instructions to open a specific note a year after his passing which would reveal the name that he learnt, saying, The rabbis will investigate my words over the recent months about the redemption and Messiah and will reveal the secret name of Messiah which was revealed to me on Keshvon 95764, November 4, 2003. End of quote. Now, this is probably what you've all been waiting for. The famous or infamous note, depending on what side of the fence you're on, left by Rav Kaduri. The note itself also appeared on the Rav's official website. It's pictured here at the bottom of the screen, but was soon taken down. The note was written cryptically and does not actually simply say that Yeshua is the Messiah. The name and is included. actually a different name, well, slightly different. Also remember that the name was a common name in Hebrew with many variations. The letters in the note actually fit the variation of Yehushua ben Nun, but the name can also be attributed to Yeshua in a more formalized fashion. For example, Yeshua is an informal Aramaic rendering. So technically speaking, an argument can be made that he could be referring to Yeshua ben Nun. The note itself is quite short and read in English, it says, regarding the Rishi Tivot of the Messiah. This is a term for a well-known coding device using acronyms by many Kabbalists. The note goes on to say, the people shall lift up and verify that his word and his Torah stand. Written with my signature in the month of mercy, Elul, in the year 5765 of the Hebrew calendar, Yitzhak Kaduri. End of quote. The content is a reference to Isaiah 42.21 that says, Hashem is well pleased for his righteousness. He will exalt the Torah and make it honorable. Notice the note says that his word and the Torah will stand. I never saw too many Christians publicizing this part of the note, did you? No, of course not, because that doesn't fit their narrative. So the beginning of the note itself contains the solution, or the instruction of how to proceed in order to find the name of the Messiah. Concerning the acronym of the name of the Messiah, that is to say that the name of the Messiah can be determined on the basis of the first letters of words. So it's not too difficult at all to find this. Wikipedia defines an acronym is a word or name formed as a type of abbreviation formed from the initial components of a word or a longer content, such as of a name or phrase, often with individual initial letters, as with NATO, which means North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So it's easy to see a motive for the real Messiah presenting himself to one of the most influential rabbis at that time to perhaps, if nothing else, cause Judaism to reopen an investigation into Yeshua Hanotri's eligibility as the Messiah. The problem, I think, was making the note publicly available, especially over the web. Why not just keep its contents within tight rabbinic circles to investigate, at least for another year? And this would have held off the onslaught of Christianity's mythical Jesus endorsement, flooding every media outlet imaginable. Surely the note should have undergone extensive analysis before it became public knowledge. The impression that I got from my research was that it was opened and slapped up over the web within hours, if not days. 
And from what I could glean, the Kabbalistic coding style was a pretty basic one. The message could still have additional codes concealed within it to this very day. Believe it or not, Rav Kaduri's supposed endorsement of Yeshua Hanotsri as Mashiach is far more damaging to Christianity than it is to Judaism for two chief reasons. Number one, Kaduri was an ultra-Orthodox rabbi, a Kabbalist, and out of all the righteous people that the Messiah could have visited on earth, he chose to visit him. Not with any correction in mind, mind you, like that of Rav Shaul, that is the Apostle Paul. If so, he would have passed on any information to his students if he so desired. So if we trace back the trajectory of Kaduri's lifestyle and teaching, we can get a good idea of what type of life may merit such an encounter. Christians who are not prompted to learn about Judaism and amend their lives to imitate Kaduri, who obviously imitated the humility of Yeshua, is quite interesting. Christians would do well not to make any fuss at all about the note. Indeed, they normally wouldn't, as their view of rabbis is generally the same as their view toward the Pharisees, which they think Yeshua unanimously condemned. But because they know the Orthodox world revered Rav Kaduri, they got all over it, taking advantage of the note's context to convert and missionize Jews, which, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see is the same as murder. Secondly, Kaduri taught and led a life right up until his passing as an Orthodox Jew, and if he indeed encountered Yeshua in his latter life, surely he would have shifted his religious stance and obligation and taught others to do so, and yet nothing moved in his devout observance before and after his encounter. If the note is genuine, it literally calls into question the Christian ideology and lifestyle. Many of Rav Kaduri's closest students confessed that he talked about Yeshua and they in turn also accepted him, but this was not according to the Christian interpretation. This is despite one of Rav Kaduri's former students coming out publicly proclaiming Yeshua as the Messiah to a Christian missionary. But this man did not at any time become a Christian. He retained all of his Jewish upbringing and practice, but his testimony was simply that Yeshua is the Messiah. Think about it. Why would Yeshua appear to an ultra-Orthodox rabbi just to reveal his name for the most part? If there was anything else he revealed, that wasn't for public scrutiny. There is no teaching by Rav Kaduri whatsoever after his encounter with Mashiach on adopting any departure from Rabbinic Judaism. There is none. The earnest is on Christianity to have major surgery, not Judaism. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri's legacy remains totally intact. It's his conduct and the effect it had on others, drawing people to be more Torah observant, to fear Hashem. That was his legacy, his diligence and devotion to Torah, not some note that supposedly endorses Christianity's interpretation of the Messiah. Thanks for joining me again on another episode of Insight into the Jewish Sages. Hey, before you go, if you like this series and you want to find out much more, check out our books, All Lights On in the Master's House, Lightning from the Master's House, Flying Chariot, Fallen Dragon, and Is Alcohol. All available on Amazon.com and other online bookstores and help us to continue to spread the word. Also check out our website, netsroomantasy.com, where we have many teachings and resources on a myriad of subjects that will enlighten and enhance your walk. Bye for now.